And next we have Cincy and the Chiefs. Oh boy. You know what I see about this? I think Jeremy Hill and Giovanni Bernard might be the best running back duo right now. You might be right, honestly. In the entire NFL, those two together on the same team is pretty fucking stellar. You know, I'll have to say the Bengals are probably the biggest surprise as far as undefeated teams go. And I'm saying that even with the knowledge that Atlanta was garbage last year. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know if I'd say shocked. I mean, I don't think it's going to hold up. I don't think it's going to hold up for any teams except maybe the Packers and the Patriots. But uh, if there's any teams that have a shot, I guess. But no, the Bengals are definitely, they're definitely being underrated, flying under the radar. And uh, I kind of think that helps them. No expectations, no pressure. Just keep winning games, and you know. You know uh, well, you know, since he, they got to the playoffs last year. Yeah, they've been in the playoffs like three years in a row, I yeah. think. Yeah. And, and they just can't win a game when they get there is the problem. Right. Well, and, you know, Packers honestly had that same problem since they won the Super Bowl. Keep getting to the playoffs, but they don't win enough games. Or or right. a lot of times they're winning, like losing wild card week, you know, or something. Right. Or, and, um, well, I think the, the Bengals have, like, the longest streak in the NFL for not winning a playoff game. Oh, that could be. Because the Bills have gone longer without appearing, but – uh. They've won a playoff, you know, game more recently than the Bengals have actually won one once they've gotten mm-hmm. there. So, and Andy Dalton is like, I think, I guess, 0-3 at this point. And so there's all that stigma. And it's one of the reasons why I guess they're kind of overlooked every year. Because it's like, oh, who cares? They're not going to do anything once they get there. But uh, the way this start is, this could be the year they do something to make some noise. Yeah. I mean, honestly. It, actually, I, I was going to make a, a small shout-out to uh, – one of people who commented on our video last week covering the Bengals. And, and yeah, I know it's surprising, right? We actually do, do shout outs sometimes if you <laughs> comment on our video. So if you want to get a shout out, you can do that. <laughs> uh, not going to do it all the time, but I, I did really like this guy. Um, he did make a few good points that the most interesting it is a little bit true that the media does kind of shit on the Bengals a lot because what they do get overlooked i think the bungles <laughs> the bungles yeah uh, and uh. they are a very well-rounded team all around andy dalton is playing really good football right now you got like we just said we got two halfbacks who are just really really good, good. Uh, who's doing their, their defense is going, going back, back on power because I would think I said that he back in either week one or week two. How you know what happened to the Bengals defense that two years ago that they were so great and then last year they kind of fell off a little bit. But it looks like they're really back of being just a great defense again. So I mean maybe not number one in a lot of categories, uh, but definitely like top ten, maybe even top five in the AFC for a lot of those and. That, I think, is contributing to them being undefeated. And I said uh, when we made our playoff predictions that I felt that the Steelers were going to win the division. And granted, that was back before Big Ben went down with an injury. Right. But, I mean, it seems easy to predict that Cincinnati um, will win this division now. I mean, it's easy to see because they are undefeated. But I'm convinced that a quarter way through the season, that being 4-0 is not a fluke, and they are well-deserved to be this 4-0 team. It's Steelers and Bengals, for sure. For sure at this point. And honestly, I might I might agree with you. Without Big Ben, the uh, the Bengals probably are the favorite now. Mm-hmm. And uh, aside from that, this game, the only other thing I want to say about this game is whoever had... Kansas City's kicker in fantasy football. Congratulations! Like, he kicked seven field goals. <laughs> seven. I mean, that's that's a damn good performance by a Bengals defense. They didn't give up a single touchdown. They were letting field goals, but hey, you can let field goals happen all day if you're scoring touchdowns on offense. Yeah, it doesn't matter know? at that point. So. And they Cincinnati was not having too, too much, much of a 
struggle reaching the end zone. No, 36 all. points. So and, You know, and that's what's baffling about the Chiefs. You look at paper of who they have on defense, and they're not really stopping anybody. Alex Smith almost threw for 400. He almost threw 400 yards, and they didn't get a touchdown somehow, which, which is, is just – Yeah, that is – Absolutely bizarre. And the, it's phenomenal, honestly. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever happened. Yeah. And on top Get of that, seven touchdowns. You know, speaking of which, between if you, I you mean have, seven seven field goals. If you have Alex Smith, you have Jamal Charles, you have Jeremy Macklin on your team. You have on paper one of the best defenses maybe in the AFC, and you're not finding ways to win games. What is happening right now with the Chiefs? Is it just a weird slump? Is it because, unfortunately, they had to give me a go against Packers at Lambeau? Unfortunately, they had to go against Cincinnati at Cincinnati. I mean, you go against two undefeated teams at their, their home turf. Is it just bad matchups and you're just unfortunate? Or right. do, the, do the points kind of show that there's something else more going on here. You would think that with this kind of an offense that they should be able to get into the end zone at least once. You know what? I've been – I like Andy Reid, and I've actually defended him over the years. But at this point, um, I mean, you got to blame you got to blame him for some of this. Like the Jamal Charles fumble should, is a play that should have never been called a couple weeks ago. And then settling for field goals – I mean, he should have gone for it at some point, you know. Like, how, why would you just keep kicking field goals? You gotta, you gotta risk. Mm -hmm. You got, you gotta take a risk at some point. And he's just not really willing to do that. He just always takes the safe route. And I mean, yeah, it, it, you win games doing that, but you have to, you have to gamble at some point. When you're trailing you know, games, it, though, it being, puts you over the top. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when you, if you're trailing in a game. Being safe isn't going to win the game for you. Anymore. I mean, the Rams are a good example of this. When the Rams get behind, one of the reasons they win games that they're not supposed to win is because they just call out all the stops. They'll do all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah. And Andy Reid just seems unwilling to pull that trigger. And you're not going to come back and win a game if you're think, not willing to gamble on something risky. Do you think Andy Reid may be an example of – Someone who is still in a older mindset of how football used to play oh, and yeah, how the evolution of football has changed and he has not taken the steps to match it. Or it's, He's a dinosaur, yeah. and he's he's a good enough coach in that old mindset that he's still able to win games, but he really hasn't. I mean, his, he, he picked up Alex Smith as his quarterback, which says a lot, the fact that he that's who he wanted to go for, you know? Yeah. I mean... He's an okay – it just shows he's not got a lot of focus on the quarterback on the passing game at all. No, that – And, it, you know, Jamal Charles is the anchor of that offense, that, not Alex that Smith. Might be and almost, I like Alex Smith too. He's yeah. not – I think he's a little underrated, but he's not going to be the guy he, – he's got a few clutch plays here and there. Uh, but he's not going to be the guy that carries you to the Super Bowl. He's going to be the guy that can help you get there, but he's not going to be the reason you get there, you know. Right. It's almost kind of bizarre, too. I mean, Alex Smith is a guy who does a short pass, but your number one wide receiver is Jerry Mack, but he's a deep threat wide receiver. So right. it's it almost, sort of doesn't match up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could. You could make it work. but think, well, That's why there's been so many tight end touchdowns and stuff, because yeah. Alex Smith is just kind of built the way he passes, that tight ends are the perfect target for his style of yeah. football. You know, and I, I, they are fortunate that they do have Kelsey, who's very, very right. good tight end. Right. That, that so I'm saying, uh, Andy Reid's crafty enough that he he kind of recognizes the the deficiencies and the strong points, and he's built a pretty solid team around it. But uh, it's not a true contender. He just hasn't. You know, he's been to the Super Bowl. He built that Philly team years ago, and they lost. But he just hasn't seemed capable of building a team that's just like. You know, just drop the hammer and just, you yeah. know, <clears throat> just punch it in. Because that's not really how football is anymore. Defense wins you championships, but offense gets you there. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a good way to settle that one down. And uh, okay. if 
you want to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, the links in the description are below on this page. You can like, comment, and do whatever you want on this page because thank you very much for listening.